A few days ago, the makers of Style Clip released a new version, or I guess a completely different version, called Style Gan Nada. Um, the Nada stands for uh, the fact that you don't need any data in order to uh, essentially optimize or retrain a model. Um, so that we take a look and look at how to use it in Colab. So there's no paper uh, available yet, uh, but it does look like they've uploaded a bunch of codes, so we can take a look at sort of how it works. Uh, the idea here is that you take a style again model you've already trained, and you're able to optimize it using Clip, which is you know purely text-based, uh, and you're able to slightly alter, or in some cases, uh, drastically alter the domain of your data set. So you'll see here we've got a photo of a baby, uh, and then in this case we've got an anime painting. So you'll see uh, the input is a photo, the output is an anime painting. Uh, and they show a lot of different examples here. They show uh, mostly working off of FFHQ, um, doing cubism, uh, another painting, Mona Lisa, anime painting, and sketch. Um, and, you know, I'd say with varying results, uh, some of these look good, some of these don't. Um, but it's pretty interesting they're able to make all these minor modifications. And you might think like, oh, well, you could do this by, I don't know, collecting a data uh, a data set of anime paintings and being able to uh, transfer learn you know in a couple steps but what this shows is you don't need to use you don't need to create a data set at all you can just use clip to uh, optimize or modify the data set uh, here's some additional amp examples uh, these get a little bit creepier so I'm going to move on uh, into I guess something even creepier uh, which is being able to take a dog model and turn it into the joker or uh, taking the dog model and turning it into Nicolas Cage. This is pretty amazing. Uh, Bugs Bunny, uh, I guess I could see that. Uh, Venom, uh, Rick Sanchez, okay. Um, clearly these people are Rick and Morty fans, uh, okay. Um, and then here we get into some pretty interesting, like these are drastically different. I mean, I guess they're still animals, but they're very different um, in terms of, yeah, so there's my cat speaking as soon as we start to show zero, the zero shot cat. Um, and we've got the panda, uh, a quokka, and a wolf. Um, so uh, pretty interesting that we're able to uh, modify the data set just using this. I'll say I think the details of this are not great, but um, overall I think it's you know kind of interesting. And I should mention the difference here between style clip versus style Ganada is that style clip operates on single images. Uh, it takes a single image and optimizes uh, that individual vector um, into uh, sort of what the text the text argument or the text prompt is, is optimizing toward. This operates on the entire model, um, which means that rather than just getting one image out of it, you get a whole model out of it. Um, and, you know, I could see the future of this being very, very powerful. Uh, you know, hopefully in the near future, we're able to almost go from, uh, you know, really drastically different domains. And that could mean we need no data whatsoever. Now, obviously, that data would have to be in clip. Uh, clip probably knows things well but might not know a diverse set of things so um, essentially what we're doing here is taking the model and sort of transfer learning or transfer optimizing uh, in a certain direction but keeping the diversity and the breadth of our previous model um, which I think is a really fascinating uh, option. So what I've gone ahead is I've gone ahead and moved this into Colab. Actually there is already a Colab notebook. Uh, all I did was uh, customize this slightly um, in order to be able to upload a custom model. So let's take a look at how this works. So I've gone ahead and uploaded uh, my gems model, which is a custom trained model of gemstones and minerals. Um, I've already uploaded that. So we can go ahead and uh, take a look at the rest of this notebook. Um, you don't have to have a custom trained model if you don't want. There are some pre-trained models that they make available through this notebook. So go ahead and check to see what GPU we have. Um, you probably need at least a V100 or P100. Um, I'm not sure how well the other ones will work uh, if you're running on memory issues, so I definitely recommend a minimum of P100. We'll need to uh, upload and, uh, or sorry, download the correct libraries. Um, I did notice that this is tied to PyTorch uh, 1.7. Um, so Colab recently updated to 1.9. So this update will take a little bit of time. So I might pause this and come back. It looks like that took about five minutes to install, so give yourself a little bit of time in order to uh, run this entire notebook. I would say, you know, 15 to 20 minutes is usually about right for this. So now that we've installed uh, the correct versions of PyTorch and the correct libraries, uh, you'll see over here we've got uh, NADA and ADA. Um, we need to set up our model type. So uh, as I mentioned, there's a couple of pre-trained models available to you here. Uh, first is FHQ, 
cat, dog, church, and horse. So if you want to just play with those, you're more than welcome to. Um, I have also added a custom option. Uh, if you add a custom option, what you'll need to do is uh, get the correct path to your model. So I'll just come over here and hit copy path, and I will paste that in, and you want to wrap that in a string. Um, and then you will also need to set the model size. Um, so in this case, uh, it's 1024. Um, if yours is 512 or 256, you want to make sure you uh, add that as well. So once this is set up, uh, you'll go ahead and run this. And one thing I should note is that uh, this actually works off of the rosinality uh, .pt format. Um, so if you upload a pickle file that has either been trained in TensorFlow um, or in the StyleGAN ADA PyTorch repo, the sort of official one, um, or mine, uh, you will need to uh, convert it. And there's a, already some nice code in here that will automatically convert it. Um, so it'll just take a couple minutes in order to do the conversion. All right, so it looks like my model uh, converted over here. You'll see over here I've got gems.pt and gems.pickle, so that converted correctly. Uh, and if you want to check, uh, you can double click on this PNG file to open it and make sure your model converted correctly. The last step we need to do is we need to make sure that our .pt file is inside the models folder. So there's two ways to do this. One is you can just drag the file in there, um, or you can use uh, this command which will move it. So what you'll do is you'll take the path of your .pt file and you will move it to uh, slash content slash models and then whatever the name of your file is. All right, so that should be all set up now. Uh, so now we're ready to actually start optimizing our model. So there's a couple uh, lines in here that you can edit. Um, there's more notes here. I'll tell you what works for me. Um, I personally have found that certain things that they have here, uh, particularly the iteration count, is actually too low in my experience. Um, but you can leave that up to whatever you uh, experience. So maybe you want to play with this a little bit. So we're going to edit two things. So the first is we're going to edit the source class and our target class. Um, source class is basically what your model is. Uh, they work off just something called photo or maybe I guess like cats or maybe uh, in this case I would say something like uh, minerals. Um, and then your target class is what you want to optimize it toward. So I'm going to do a thing here um, that is sort of what uh, the clip community has found out, which is that if you do featured on ArtStation, um, this will sort of, by default, uh, make the image look a little bit nicer. Um, and then it'll also sort of, tends to be a lot more 3D art on ArtStation, so this will make it sort of 3D-like. So let's do uh, 3D and then let's do sparkles. I want to see if this will like add a little bit of sparkle and maybe make my model look uh, more 3D-like. So let's go ahead and use that. Uh, the last thing you want to touch is training iterations. Um, I have personally found that I like to crank mine up. So uh, they recommend something like 200 to 400 iterations. I personally found that too low in my experience. Um, so I cranked up to 1,000. I would generally say like turn it up higher and then if you find that in the middle you actually like the results, you can always run this again with a lower iteration rate. So at this point, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, one note is the output interval is how often your new image will spit out. Um, so in this case, I think 50 is about right. You can make it lower if you want to see lots of different iterations, um, but that's sort of how it works. OK, so we'll go ahead and run the cell. And what should happen um, as this begins to run, uh, the first time it runs, it's going to take a little bit of time just to get set up. Um, it's going to need to import uh, some model files directly from the repo. Uh, it's going to need to install a couple of things. So it usually takes a little bit of time just to spin up the first time. Uh, I have found that I can generally run this uh, multiple times. And every time, about 1,000 iterations takes about 5 to 10 minutes. Um, because I'm on a P100, this will be a little bit slower. Uh, if I were on a V100, it would be about twice the speed, uh, so be twice as fast. Um, so just know that like, if you're on a P100, it's going to be a little bit slower. If you luck out and get a V100, it'll be a lot faster. So now we've run through all this. So I believe we should start to see samples down below. Yeah, so you'll see here that as this is iterating, um, my numbers will increment. So uh, at some point, I should see uh, something like this number moving up. There it is. So. Uh, when it starts, it's just going to start to show you just what your model looks like. This is basically what my uh, current model looks like. And when this hits 50, it's going to spit out the next, the next iteration.
There we go. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time just to keep spitting out. Um, so I would generally give this, you know, a little bit of time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back and then we'll look at our results. That took about 10 minutes, um, which feels about right for a P100. So let's take a look at our results. So as you scroll through here, uh, you'll see every four images, uh, these grid of four images, um, will be a new step. So see, as we're moving through this, we're getting a little bit brighter. We're getting some brighter highlights. I'm also noticing the shading is sort of getting a little bit more accurate. We're actually seeing sort of the reflections um, off of the floor, which is that sort of 3D uh, effect, I would imagine. So I did find that I actually sort of overcooked this. I think a thousand steps was too many. Um, I think I found that around 600, it was about good, maybe 550. Uh, so if I wanted to optimize this again with that in mind, what I could do is go back up here uh, and change the training iterations to 550 and run it again. Uh, for this demo, it's fine. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, but I would say that, uh, again, it, I maybe overcooked it. So the last thing you want to do here is... Um, well, a couple of things that, to note about this is one, I do find that sometimes if you stop mid-session, um, you end up with a lot of uh, RAM being used up. So if you ever run into that issue where you're seeing memory issues and you're on a V100 or a P100, um, you can run this cell and this will uh, dump um, all of your uh, stored VRAM. So this will help with that issue. Um, the next thing we want to do is we actually just want to generate some images from this. So we're going to run this cell. This will take our optimized model and run all of, uh, and generate a handful of images for us. And there are uh, a sample of images. Um, you could turn this, you could crank this up, you can make it 50, 100, whatever you want. Um, but you'll see I've got some very bright highlighted images. Um, and maybe it's starting to overfit a little bit. I can see that it's all optimizing in the same direction. Um, maybe Sparkle is almost turning these into star shapes. These almost look like starfish or something. Um, so at this point, now I can go ahead and hit save this image. And I can download that. And I believe if we go to output, uh, we should see our checkpoint in here. Uh, my guess is that the issue here is that uh, this is the collab bug of where you can't actually see what's in here. Let's do this. Let's do ls. No, there's actually nothing in there. Okay, so uh, it's possible that maybe you can't save out the model at this point. Let me see if we've got... Is anywhere else? Is anywhere else in here? Um, yeah, so maybe you can't see out the model. I'll fix that in just a minute. Um, oh, here we go. Convert the image. Nope, this is not it. Okay, so uh, apparently you cannot see out the model. I'll work on that in just a minute, um, and hopefully by the time this uh, video goes up, I'll have that fixed and added. Um, so essentially we'll save, we'll be able to download our, our new PT file and be able to work off that. Um, I should also note that if you want to work with FFHQ, there is also a thing uh, where, where it allows you to encode the image um, this is basically like projection, but it's much faster. So it'll allow you to take an image that you've uploaded, invert it, uh, and then be able to apply your uh, StyleGAN NADA um, changes to it. So I won't cover that in this video. Maybe I'll cover it in a second video, but if you're interested, the code here is here for this. So um, I think StyleGAN NADA is really interesting. Um, 10 minutes to change a model so drastically is really amazing. Uh, not having to create a data set is even more amazing. Um, and I think there's lots of really great future usages uh, of this tool. So I recommend playing around with this. If you make something really cool, feel free to share it in my Slack channel, um, which is linked to from my from the video description. Um, yeah, and I hope you find a cool way to play with this. Uh, so that's it for this time, um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.